Hey Motor One, this is Managing Editor Brandon Turkus, and I am here with the all new Chevrolet Suburban. You can see the high country model that I've been driving right behind me. I've just wrapped up a 250 mile sprint in this vehicle and I have some thoughts. Right now I'm going to take you through the cabin, some of the things I like, I don't like, but for the full story you got to go to MotorOne.com and check out our full first drive. When it comes to big three row SUVs, few carry the weight of the Chevrolet Suburban. Redesigned for 2021 and now featuring a four corner air suspension that pairs with GM's excellent magnetic dampers, this family friendly hauler pairs impressive refinement with a cavernous interior. While not a luxury vehicle in the traditional sense, the redesigned Suburban is more comfortable than ever before. And at $85,000 for this high country trim, it better be. The new Suburban is big, both in its size and design character. Adopting the fascia of the Silverado pickup truck while introducing a softer rear end design is a bold move, but I think it works for the most part. Overall, I like the general look of this truck, not because it's more attractive than the Silverado, but because replacing the bed and cab design with a single body means better, more natural proportions. This high country model boasts a number of exterior details to distinguish it from lesser trims. You get 22 inch wheels, quad tipped exhaust, which look awesome on a big SUV like this, and finishes that GM calls Galvano and Gordic. I have no idea which is which, but if you look closely, there are a number of bronzish accents around the grill and elsewhere on the suburban high country that look just a little bit more premium. There are also plenty of high country badges. That said, I wish GM had paid as much attention to the interior detailing as it did to the exterior. All right, I am sitting in the driver's seat of the Suburban High Country. This is as ritzy as a Chevrolet product is going to get. It costs $85,000 as equipped, and it is the nicest trim by a country mile, by a high country mile, you could say. You get this really nice leather upholstery up on the dash. It's got this gorgeous French stitching. It's just coarse enough that it feels like a quality item. It's great to see that on the dash upper. You get the same thing on the dash face, but as you move towards the more functional bits, it starts to get, the leather gets replaced by more plastic trim, but this feels like very quality plastic. It's, it's firm and has a good texture to it, even though it looks smooth. It's the same thing down here where you have the main controls for the climate system and elsewhere over here where most of the drive controls are located. One of the things that's concerned me for some time now is that the range topping versions of Chevrolet and GMC pickup trucks and large SUVs don't quite feel special enough relative to their lesser trims. And I'm worried that's kind of the case here too. There's not a lot in here that feels special. You get this nice wood trim. It's probably fake wood, but you know what? I'll give them a pass because it's, there's just enough of it and it's matte wood that looks really, really nice. I, I actually kind of like it a lot and it's just present enough throughout the interior. But compared to a Ford Expedition Platinum, it, the cabin doesn't feel quite as special. There's, there's no detail or excitement. The steering wheel is exactly what you would get on a standard Suburban. Let me bring it back a bit so you can get a better look. The only difference is you have these vaguely copperish, pewterish accents that are plastic. It's not great, but give us something Chevy to make us feel special when we're spending $85,000 on one of your SUVs. This should not feel like a $50,000 truck. It should feel like an $85,000 truck. I'm talking about the infotainment system, this is the same infotainment software that we've experienced in a couple of recent Cadillacs, the Chevrolet Corvette, uh, the Chevrolet Silverado. It's fine. It's quick. It's snappy. It looks good. We'll go to the front page, go back to audio, go to phone, navigation, climate control. Uh, it's all snappy and it responds quickly. It looks very nice. It's very easy to learn. This version also has wireless CarPlay. I obviously don't have that hooked up because I'm recording on a cell phone and could not do CarPlay and a video at the same time. It would probably break something. This vehicle does not have Chevy's comprehensive towing suite, which is available on the Silverado. That said, you still get a fair number of cameras and 
look at how crisp and clear this 360 degree camera is. That is very, very high quality. The picture isn't great here because the sun is right up here and you get a bright spot, but look at the, look at the clarity and the resolution there and the color. And this is a amazingly good camera suite. Let's go to the side view. Let's go to the tow hitch, which we don't currently have hooked up and the front overhead view. And it's a very nice camera suite. It's not as comprehensive as what you'll get elsewhere, but you know what, for the vast majority of customers, especially those who don't tow regularly, this is a brilliant, brilliant setup. One of the things I don't really care for are the buttons and switches for uh, changing gear. This feels like a solution for the sake of a solution rather than something that really needed to be improved. I've said the same thing about uh, GMC Terrain and other vehicles that adopt this kind of setup. As it works on here, you push, push P for park, N for neutral. There we go, we're in neutral. L for, oh, I have to shift the drive for a bigger part in the car. Shift to drive, then L. There are no paddle shifters. This is this is how you change gear. So no paddle shifters, no column on or anything. You actually have to take your hands off the wheel to change gear in manual mode, which is a little bit strange to me, but you know, it is what it is. The, the reason there aren't paddles is because you have controls for the audio system on the back of the steering wheel. All right, we're gonna hop into the back seat and show you a little bit about what life is like back there. All right, we're in the back seat, and what I've done here is I've set up the driver's side middle seat to be as far forward as possible, and the passenger side middle seat to be back as far as possible, to give you an idea of how much legroom you're going to get here. This is pretty spacious. Even if it's scooted all the way up, it's not bad, especially if you got little kids back there. It's definitely gonna be tolerable on a longer drive. Let's flip this guy forward. You can flip the seats forward either at the back of the vehicle in the trunk, which I'll show you in a second, or right here. One touch, does it all. You can also hit it again, and it flips up. So here we have the third row, and this is a, as three row SUV go, SUVs go, this is a very nice third row. With the middle seat all the way forward, you can see the level of leg space that that passenger over there has. It's it's roomy as can be. You get up a up above, the roof kind of kicks back a little bit, so there's a boost in headroom, which is definitely nice. That's uh, a problem that isn't always appreciated in uh, three row SUVs. Very, very nice third row. Let's take a look at the trunk and I'll show you the fun stuff back there. Power operated tailgate, naturally. It's good for $85,000. All right, so with third row in place, you have ample cargo space. You could definitely fit a weekend's worth of bags for four with no problem. Now the third row is power operated. So I can lower both of them, just hold that button or I can raise them. Ta-da! Lovely. I will never get tired of that feature on a vehicle. The second row is not power, well, it's hard to describe. So what I'm just gonna do is show you. You press this button here. And then press it again. Works well enough. The only problem is now to put those back down, you have to walk around and physically put them down and lift the backrest up. I kind of wish those were power as well as the back seats, but you know, it is what it is, especially for when you consider how rarely people might be raising or lowering those middle seats. The back seats, I'm very happy to see that they're power. Let's put it under here. And you have a little cargo cubby under the floor there. So that is the 2021 Chevrolet Suburban High Country. It is a comfortable, competent family hauler in just the vehicle Chevrolet needs right now to strike back at the Ford Expedition. 
That said, we're a little bit concerned that this range topping model doesn't do enough to distinguish itself from its lesser siblings. And with an as-tested price of $85,000, that's not really okay. For more on the Suburban, check out our full first drive at the link below.